Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, as always, I love to give all praise, honor, and glory to my power, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to Elder Tahar and the rest of the elders that are fairly pushing this truth. And as always, peace and blessings unto the elect. All right, the title of this lesson is going to be All Our Lovers Have Forgotten Thee, which that's uh, written in the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter and the 14th verse. All right, and that's dealing with uh so called you, you so called blacks, Latinos, Native and similar Indians and these different nations and the gods that you worship are because you know our people they're prone they're prone to committing whoredom which whoredom would be idolatry or the worshiping of these different nations. And that's and that's the main reason why we're even in Captivity, are right, because you know, our people were serving were serving other gods, so the heavenly Father put us into slavery, and in and in these people, our people, they really trust in these in these other gods, right? They put their trust, they put all their faith and hope in these other gods. Now we we don't we saw that when when you read the book of Exodus, all right? These niggas they came out of Egypt. Moses went up to the mountain. He went up into the chariot to receive the two, uh, to, to receive the two stone the tablets, and they lost faith, which really they never have it, but they lost faith and they coerced Aaron into making them an idol. You know, that's what our people are prone to do. But this is Jeremiah thirty and twelve. It says, "For thus saith Yahweh, Thy bruise is thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous." There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines, right? Which ultimately our healing medicine will be the Heavenly Father sending his son, Yahweh Shah, to die for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. All right, because without Yahweh Shah, now we wouldn't be healed. Let's go ahead and get that. Uh, this is Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. And verse and verse five, it says, "But he was wounded for our for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed." You see that? So our Lord Yahweh Shah, he took on our bruises; he took on our wounds, so that he can heal us up. Because you know the scriptures tell you that the whole head is sick. But through Hamashiach Yahushai, now we're healed. Now we are the sons of the Most High again. All right, so back to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 14. This is all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. See, that's what the Heavenly Father came at us as an enemy. And during that process, the lovers of our people forgot them. They don't seek. They don't seek for them, which let me go ahead and bring the priest about proving who the lovers are. All right, this is Ezekiel 23, starting at verse 1. The word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. So, so that's letting you know that the two women are likened into the nation of Israel. Because when you read the scriptures, uh, Israel is likened into a woman. This is Second Ezra, chapter 10, starting at verse 44. It says, This woman whom thou sawest is Zion, and whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as the sea builder. You see, that's so the woman. So uh, Israel represents a woman, a comely and delicate woman. Let's go ahead and get that in Jeremiah. Sixth chapter. It's Jeremiah 6 and verse 2. It says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So boom. So back to Ezekiel 23 and verse 3. It says, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts, their breast press, 
and they were bruised and there they bruised the teach of their virginity basically our people were taken advantage of verse 4 and the names of them were Ahola the elder which let's go into the word for Ahola I believe that's the northern kingdom yep Ahola Samaria as an adulteress with Assyria Metaf metaphorical all right so you see that so i her tent i.e idolatrous sanctuary you see that so these are going into the idols of the nation of israel so it says in the name of them were ahola the elder and ahola ba her sister and they were mine which obviously ahola ba would be on the southern kingdom right it says jerusalem as adulterous wife of Yahweh. All right, see that? Uh, a symbolic name for Judah. So it says here, and they were mine, and they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and, Jer and Jerusalem Aholaba. See, so it even tells you. Watch this, verse 5. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine. And she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. You see, that's what that letting you know who the lovers of uh, um, Jerusalem and the northern kingdom is. Are right, dealing with uh, these uh, the nations and their gods, these, these different nations and their gods. Verse 7, I mean, verse 6, it says, which were clothed with blue captains and rulers of all the desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed whoredom with them, with all them that were chosen, them that were chosen, men of Assyria, and with all on, and with all whom, on whom she doted, with all their idols, she defiled herself. You see that? And our people defiled themselves. All right, that's why the Heavenly Father had it to where the Northern Kingdom they got taken into a, they got taken into captivity under the Assyrian Empire, right? Verse 8, neither left she her whoredoms bought from Egypt. See that? So Israel was still a committed spiritual fornication. Which let me go ahead and get that in. Uh, this is Second Chronicles 21, verse 11. It says, moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, which high places are doing with altars. All right. Hold up. Let me clock in real quick. Right, so um, yeah, high places that symbolize idols. All right, let's go into that. Yeah, see that high places as places of worship. So when you read high places in the kingdom, or Israel uh, uh, making high places, that's dealing with them worshiping other gods. Those are altars. So it says, moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah. And cause the hold up, so like you. All right, says, and cause the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication, and compel Judah thereto. Which let's read in the NOT. It's going to tell you. It's going to break it down. It says he built pagan shrines in the hill country of Judah, and had led the people of Jerusalem and Judah to give themselves to pagan gods to go astray. Should I let you know that fornication? All right. There's two meanings to it. Our right, on one hand, one meaning is you know illicit sexual acts like necro uh, necrophilia, or being a lesbian, or being a uh, being a damn body boy, are you having sex with uh, uh, animals? Right, you you uh, get it. But then you have a spiritual fornication, all right? Which spiritual fornication? That's idolatry. See, to so it says. Uh, t t says be a harlot or commit fornication. Uh, t t t why? Because hey, see, it tells you right there, it says the Jewish people, or oh, see, figure, see, it says figuratively to commit idolatry. All right, the Jewish people, which should just say Jews or the Israelites, the Israelites are being regarded as the spouse of Yahweh. You see that? So when we worship other gods. 
we're playing the harlot. We're being a harlot. We're cheating on the Mosai. And that's why the Mosai put us away. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that. What's that? Uh, let me see. That's Jeremiah. Second chapter. Let me see. Bear with me one moment. Let me look it up. Put her away. All right, boom. Jeremiah, the third chapter. So this is Jeremiah 3 and 8. It says, And I saw when for all the causes whereby I backslided Israel committed adultery, I put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and plead the harlot also. You see that? So the Heavenly Father, he put us away like a bitch. All right, and that's what you would do. All right, that's what you would do to a woman. If she, if she commit adultery on you, you, know, you do have some niggas, they'll take her back. But, you know, for, you know, for the most part, you're not going to want to take a woman back that has sex with another man. And that's what the Heavenly Father did. The Heavenly Father put us away but yeah the heavenly father is going to have mercy on us right because he's a merciful power right so back to ezekiel 23 and verse 8 this has never left she her whoredoms bought from egypt for in her youth they lay with her and they bruised the breasts of her virginity and poured their whoredom upon her then done with what their idols Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of, of her lovers, into the hands of their of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. You see, so hey, look, since you want to be with them and worship and worship their gods, all right, then fuck you. Then I'm gonna just send send your ass off to them. So now let me go ahead and jump to. Ah, uh, here we go. Hold up, bye now. Oh boom! Ooh, whew, this is uh, this is hot right here. Let me jump to verse twenty-two real fast, right? Let me jump to verse twenty-two and then I'm gonna go back up. Watch this. Therefore, O Aholabah, thus save your how power. Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, which in this case for Judah that will be the. B that would be the Babylonians. All right. It says, behold, I'll raise up thy lovers against thee. Watch this. From whom thy mind is alienated. And I will bring them against thee on every side. See that? Who Whose mind is alienated. And who is alienated when you read in the scriptures. All right. All right. I'm the Gentiles. Right. The Gentiles, which those Gentiles are Israelites who were alienated. With the gods or 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 alienated from the Most High, so this so this so this lets you know, this lets you know who's the alienated. See that to be estranged, and who's the estranged in the New Testament? And the stranger are those the Israelite foreigners, man, Israelites that were consenting to the gods of the other nations, are getting down with uh, uh, the culture of the heathens. Right, but anyway, so let's go back up here to Jer to Ezekiel twenty three and verse eleven. Now, since when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her and in, in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister, in her whoredoms, she doted upon the Syrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed with uh, uh, Georgius Lee horsemen riding upon horses. All of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way, and that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with ver vermilion, girded with the girdles upon their loins, exceeding and dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to, after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity and as soon as she saw them with her eyes she doted upon them and sent messages unto them in Chaldea. and that's and that's how horror is man right you see uh, uh you see a man he flashy 
All right, he got he, he got the shit on. He got money. What is a woman going to do? A woman's going to automatically flop, and that's what our people did, man. Just man, just like a woman. All right, female female nature. Verse sixteen, well, verse seventeen. It says, and the Babylonians came into into the bed of love, and they defiled her with with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. You see that? And that's what happened. All right, people, are they seeing that they see the gods of these of these different nations? All right, they look precious. Oh shit, man, I, man, I want to get down with that, and they do that, and by that they commit whoredom. And when the heavenly Father casts us off, what they do? They cry back unto the heavenly Father. But this time around, Mosiah is just, just going to do away with y'all. You know, until we get to the kingdom, you get reincarnated back. But the heavenly Father, he's not showing mercy like he like he once did. All right, this is Jeremiah. I mean, Judges chapter ten and verse starting at verse eleven it says, and and Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines? The Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I deliver you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore I would deliver you no more. See that? The most I said, man, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna undeliver y'all asses no more, man. I done, I done saved you from all of your oppressions, but, but here you go again. You're worshiping. These uh um these other gods. Verse fourteen, go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your trouble. That's right. And so called Jesus Christ, all right, uh 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 fucking Amun Ra, or Tammuz, Muhammad. They ain't gonna Allah. They ain't gonna save you in these times. Only the Most High. Only the Heavenly Father Yahweh, all right, is gonna save us. All right, through His Son. Yeah, I was shy. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native and some Indians, you better get with the program. And that's justifiable, man. All right. And that's how a man would treat our slut. Like, yo, 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 why the fuck is you trying to cry to me? Nah, man. It's kind of it's, it's really it's really like our people was treating the most high like a uh, like a a good guy. And um and um, today's standards, because, you know, 80s woman, you know, just doing the comparison, just bringing this, just bringing this to life. You know, a woman, a woman will fuck with a bad boy. And she and she and she know and she know that and she know that that nigga ain't shit, too. He a nigga. All right, he ain't got no job. All right. Pants sagging to his to his damn ankles. Just a ain't shit nigga eating up. Eating up all your food, eating up all your kids' foods, your kid foods and shit. <laughs> Taking your damn EBT, but guess what? She was still spread, her, but she was still spread her legs open to that to that no good nigga. But then here comes you know, uh, uh, Mister Nice Guy, so called allegedly. You know he got a job, all right? He's doing good. He's doing good for himself. But she will reject that guy for the ancient nigga. Well, that's. Exactly what our people did. Our people forsook the Most High for something that for something that that would destroy them, something that wouldn't profit them. Because what does it profit for a woman to fuck with an ancient nigga? It doesn't. A thug ass nigga. It doesn't. It doesn't profit. It's more profitable for you to be with a man that's stable, the man the man that takes good care of you, but. They don't see it like that. And that's how our people didn't see it. Our people was like, dang, what profit is there in serving, in serving, in serving the most high? He a good guy. And we ain't going to mess with the good guys. We're going to mess with these uh, the bad boys, the nations, and these different idols. And that's why the Heavenly Father put our asses, put our asses into captivity. And that's why the Heavenly Father is going to destroy two-thirds of our people, man, just for that line of reasoning, right? Because they like to have fun. Hey, because that's the whole... That's a whole spell, man, with a with a woman. With a woman that's with a uh a thug ass nigga, they wanna just have fun. They 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 love they love the excitement. You know what I'm saying? They love the thrill. Well well that's the same way with our people. Or they just love the excitement messing with these other nations. But this is Nehemiah chapter nine and verse 
27. It says, Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them, and in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, which this is a Torah only cut, letting you know that letting you know that you know there's multiple saviors. It says who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You see that so the Heavenly Father always been saving us. But this time around, you niggas. Heavenly Father ain't, ain't saving nothing. He's just going to destroy you. Yep, he's going to destroy your ass. Matter of fact, let's get that. This is Amos. Chapter 9. You know, and this lesson just stemmed from me just looking for a video to do last night. I had did two lessons yesterday. And I was, look, I was really looking for a third one to do, but I was just like, man, I'll just... uh. I just say before uh, tomorrow. Uh, hold on, it's got a message. All right, this is Amos chapter nine and verse eight. It says, "Behold, the eyes of Yahweh power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth." Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, save the house. See, that's what the Heavenly Father, his eyes are upon the sinful kingdom, which this is contextually dealing with Israel, but we apply it to America as well. But under the Heavenly Father, he's going to leave a remnant. All right, jump to verse 11. Oh, verse 10. It says, all the nation, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which I'll say the evil shall not overtake. Nor prevent it. See, that's what all the sinners of the Lord's people, they're going to die. They're going to die by the sword, which the sword is what? The nuclear missiles. All right, so with that, Yahweh Tazai, you few brothers and sisters were edified. So next time I say, Shalom.